I wanted to talk though about computational fluid dynamics, which is a cousin to finite element analysis. And this just has some pictures, which are good fun to see. And on the center screen, you see convective, uh, natural convection. On the right is from the old days of finite element analysis, and you're looking at stress analysis or uh, stress concentration. And I wanted, basically, this is all pictures, but I did want to show you a couple of things. So with, um, with these numerical methods, you sort of have two elements to them. You have nodes and elements. So nodes are the dots, the points, the vertices, and they're keeping track of geometry. They're keeping track of an object's geometry, in the x, y, and z planes. And then the elements connect the nodes with some kind of relationship. And that relationship could be thermal conductivity, it could be Poisson's ratio, modulus elasticity, whatever it is you're doing, but it's saying how the nodes react to uh, forces, loads, changing conditions of any sort. So that's basically some terminology that you might find helpful. So it's a way you break down complex geometry into simple shapes that can be solved. And then if we look at some examples, so again, these are graphics. And I'd like to see if move the other one. <clears throat> so this is natural convection of a, a, a tablet. And you're looking at, on the right, a temperature. So you have heat flow over the, the tablet. So this is a hot tablet. The battery's creating uh, heat as a function of the current squared times resistance that you may be familiar with. And as the hot air, as the air heats up, it gets more buoyant. So we'll look, look at this in fluid dynamics, but hot air does not rise. More dense air pushes it up. So the air heats up and it starts rising. So it has a velocity, and that velocity imparts a higher convective coefficient. So you get more convective heat transfer. And this is the sort of the profile of what natural convection could look like. And then you get dispersion. You actually see the velocity of the vectors here as they kind of blend in with the, the heated plume above. And we'll look at more of this. So I think this is helpful. So this is flow through from one size diameter to another size diameter. And it's a bad design, it's very abrupt. And what you can see, one of the things is when you look, I have a, I wrote a note up here. If you look at the, which direction this is flowing, one thing you can see if you think of your thermodynamic background and how energy doesn't change, and it can certainly, it, it can move from one place to another. But if you look at the velocity profile over here, which is over here, the velocity is lower to the right, the average velocity, just visually, so the dark red is high velocity, it's lower here. So if you were to sort of integrate the velocity over that area, it would be lower than here. So the kinetic energy on the right is lower than the kinetic energy on the left, and that's due to lost energy, due to friction of various sorts. And if the flow is the other way, energy would increase. So you're converting kinetic energy to something else. That's what's going happening here from the left to the right. So on the, on the left here, you have this big chamber, and the air is moving slowly through here. And then suddenly, it's forced into the small pipe. And the way it responds then is by increasing velocity, because the, uh, um, you know, it's a function of the area and the flow rate. So if the flow rate doesn't change and the area decreases, velocity is going to go up. So again, you can look at this at your own leisure too, but this just kind of gives you some visuals. And you see over in the corners here that you're not getting any flow at all. It's very low velocity. So very poor heat transfer or whatever you're trying to do, you're not getting much of that. And then you get this kind of throttling effect going through a small diameter. And these are just examples of velocity change. So there's a lot here. And I encourage you again, just to look at these. There's, there's uh, indicators, it's all kind of straightforward. Indicators of, uh, in, this, in the right case, of velocity and uh, temperature. So the velocity increases as a function of geometry. You see behind the holes that the velocity is lower. So when we look at pressure drag, when we look at fluid dynamics, that, that comes into play. So you, you can think of the, these eddies behind tubes. So we're looking kind of at tubes going through something. And there's these low velocity eddies behind them. And that causes a higher drag than you might think. And then if you look at temperature, so here if you, let's see, um, if you look behind the, the uh, tube, the temperature is higher, and that's because the velocity is low. So you see uh, the upper one is velocity. Low velocity means poor convective heat transfer, and therefore the temperature is higher. 
this is this is uh, flow through heat exchanger. And again, what's interesting, this is like a radiant heat exchanger, is if you look at uh, the direction of how things flow, you can see you have higher velocity at the bottom than you do at the top. So it's helping you get an idea of which way things are flowing. And these are, when you do uh, computational fluid dynamics, and we can talk about that just a little bit, you can plot things like uh, con uh, uh, streamlines, lines that particles follow. You can plot velocity, temperature, the resident time of the particles. And this is uh, the same sort of numerical method we looked at briefly with finite element analysis, but it's taking complex geometry, breaking it down, but it's doing it for fluids. So these are gases and liquids. And it's giving you some interesting visuals. And here you can see uh, the low velocity in the radiator or the heat exchanger and the higher velocities in the tube because, again, the flow, if you're pushing a certain amount of air or water or whatever, and you put it into a smaller area, it's got to go faster. So by making the, the uh, air, in this case, going slower through the heat exchanger, uh, that's good and bad. It's good in that you have less drag, less friction drag, because when things go slower, there's less friction, but it's bad in terms of convective heat transfer. But it's also good in terms of the area. So you want a big heat exchanger because it gives you more area. But when you lower velocity, you lower the convection coefficient. Um, so these are things that come into play. So to get, have a good heat, trans heat transfer, ideally you have a high delta T, you have high conductivity, high convection, and high radiation. You do all those things, that's the idea. But it doesn't normally work that way. So you give up one to gain another. And there's certainly practical issues too. So that's just kind of an interesting image. And we'll take questions on this after. This is a neat um, uh, visual showing impingement on a, an elbow. So I move this again, and let's see. Okay. So the right one is velocity, the left one is pressure. So what's happening here is when something's flowing from the right here, it has inertia. Remember, inertia is a property of matter. We talked about that. So it's banging into the elbow. Here. That's why you get this high pressure at the elbow. So in other words, the fluid flow wants to go this way, and suddenly the geometry, there's a object in the way. It's not letting it go this way. So it's got to change direction. And when you change direction, you have an energy conversion of some sort. Uh, and there's a, there's a change that arises. Well, one of the changes is this rise in static pressure. And sometimes we talk about velocity pressure and static pressure, which we'll explore later. But that's those are kind, of, kind of helpful things to think about. And then on the other hand, the air that's flowing down here, it wants to keep flowing. So it essentially draws a vacuum over here. So this air, if you see that mouse, it's going this way, it wants to keep going this way. And the viscous forces between the molecules are drawing other molecules away and it creates this sort of vacuum, which is kind of wild. Um, and anyway, I think that's interesting. So when you, if you ever heard of water hammer in some, especially older homes, if you shut off the valve, you'll get a bang sound. And that's because the water is trying to flow, suddenly a valve is shut, and you have this uh, inertia of the water suddenly going to zero. And just a couple more visuals. And I was going to show you some, some software that you might find interesting for certain things. And this, is, uh, this takes a while to process. But here we're looking again at pressure and velocity. So it's what we looked at before. And if you look at air, which has low viscosity, low density, if you look at the velocity field and you compare, if you see the red core here, it's making that turn around this pipe. And you compare it with water right over here, which is, has more of that impingement issue. Okay, it has more inertia than here, so it does not like making that turn as much. And there's steam and oil as well. Now, oil is very viscous, and we'll talk about that later. So it's uh, there's some different effects there. But if you compare air and water, which are very important for us, you can see if you look at these red high velocity elements, you can see the different profile as they make these turns. And that's all about inertia. And so in talking about this, it's sort of an introduction to uh, fluid dynamics in a way, but it's got this kind of heat transfer overlay to it. So because we're dealing with fluids. Okay. And then okay, then I just want to show you something a little different. This is a thermal load analysis software. So this is some software I've used that's really neat and shows you how easy this is to use. I'm going to try to run a video. We'll see if that works. I have the link on there. But 
what you can do for uh, applied heat transfer in at least the environmental area, house design, building design, and whatnot, is use programs in which you literally draw the building. Here we're looking at a house of two floors. And if you look at that plan view, uh, you can see bedroom one, storage, office, all these kind of things. So you've got the blue and the brown for different floors. And what you do is you draw these. And it's, it's like Visio. There is drag and drop. It's really simple. You can drag in doors and all these kind of things. And then you can set up the material composition of the walls, the windows, the doors, the roof, the, uh, the soil around the building, the foundation, and certainly the location. And you say, OK, all the walls are going to have R19 with, with you know, some Tyvek coating and vinyl siding and all this sort of thing. So it's really practical. You can put in practical building uh, uh, setups that aren't, so it's not just the insulation or the wood or the uh, metal studs or whatever, but it's actually the whole amalgam of things that make up a real wall and a real building. And you can do this for residential and, construction and uh, commercial. I have residential up here now. And the same is true with the roofs. And what it does then is it calculates all this stuff for you. And it's really quite easy. So you draw the building. You're making a mathematical model by drawing your building in with its windows and all that. And this calculates infiltration and conduct, you know, conductive heat losses through the walls. Uh, it deals with radiant heat transfer from the roof, especially. And even considers a window uh, window issues, even the reflection off the ground. So it looks at some radiant issues. It, yeah, certainly does. It, it takes into uh, the geometry of the overhangs, so where the sun is shading windows or walls, it looks at that. And it's really straightforward. Um, and we have this here, too. So uh, it's, uh, incre it's so easy, it's almost a little scary. <laughs> you can put in your construction materials up here, start drawing this, and boom, you get a load calculation. And it'll actually do duct counts, too. So I'll, I'll go back to the previous screen. So these are ducts. And showing how those are laid out, which is a, a, a major heat transfer issue because as we looked at before, this is how you push hot air or cold air around a building. And that's important. And, and also fresh air, air with um, low carbon dioxide is part of 